everybody. Yeah. Hey. Hey, can you can you see and hear me? I can see and hear you. Can everybody else see and hear you? Hey guys. Hello, I think so. Gosh, this is such a like um blast from the past, eh? I remember Isn't doing just? this a few years back. This is awesome. Yep. <laughs> how yep. are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. You just hear me waffling about how freezing cold it is. <laughs> yes. It's uh it's it's freezing rain here today. So it's been uh pretty pretty I feel like freezing rain is the worst like the worst weather because it's not snowing, but it's as cold as it can possibly be to still rain and everything just turns to ice. So you have to cancel all of your plans. Oh, wow. So I feel <laughs> you on that. I feel you too. We are having, we are, we are misery um, up here in Ontario today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got minus nine, it's which is pretty more? extreme. Yeah. Minus nine for the UK is like, Oh, that's and we've cold. Got snow. <laughs> Well, that's nice though. Are you going to go out and like partake in any snow related activities? I've had, well, we've had it for like three or four days and I've walked the dogs a few okay. times a day. So it's so wearing off now. It. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm over it now. <laughs> you're over it. <laughs> well, you have to hop on like a saucer of some sort and shoot yourself down a hill. I don't know if I would survive that. I you have would. Have well, <laughs> well, maybe, I know, I know. Maybe like a, maybe like a, a slight incline just to get a tiny bit of speed i live on a hill so it could work do you well maybe don't go down that one i don't know how steep it is but <laughs> but yeah yeah oh good well at least you have snow i don't know it's kind of nice. nice rather than nice. it's better than it just being cold that's my philosophy yeah i say snow was better than rain snow is better than rain i hear you yeah yeah, I, I would agree. That's why I could never live like out on our West Coast in Vancouver because it doesn't snow, but it just rains for like six months. And I don't know how people live there. It sounds so depressing, but I feel like yeah. that's kind of a UK thing. Like you guys deal with that. Well, some years. Some years okay. it's, yeah, it's getting warmer here. So <laughs> yeah, all that. Yeah, well, I was going to say that's great, but is it? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Um, so you've had uh quite I recognize quite a lot of the people on this chat, but we've got some new people as nice. well, which is wonderful. Well, that's great. So I'm like trying to like watch before. you and the chat and watch you. Feel free to not, not watch I'm not, not as interesting as the chat. On the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> um I've got one question to start off before everyone's asking questions, we've got lots of questions, but I'll start off with one if that's all right. Sure. Okay, so if money was no object and producers and networks always said yes, yeah. what would your dream project be to make and what role would you like to do, i.e. producer, director or actor? Ooh, I think I'd like to act um, because I think producing and directing are such stressful positions that if it's going to be my dream project i don't want that i want to get to, to do the, the most <laughs> enjoyable of the jobs um i would do it would be some sort of period piece ensemble cast for sure i love like an ensemble thing like i wouldn't want it to mm -hmm. be like oh it's like me starring and not that doesn't interest me as much as working with like a bunch of actors that i really love I love ensemble yeah. pieces. Um, so it'd be like an ensemble murder mystery set in the late 1800s. Let's go with that. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that. Or maybe maybe the same Melanie could direct like, anyone. Could it be some sort of small fantasy element? You know what I watched the pilot of last night is The Sandman. Um, yeah, I've seen that. really good. It's it doesn't because I watched the pilot and I was like, oof, this is a little bit too heavy handed on like the magic and sci fi for me because I do find with those shows, there's a point where I'm like, okay, but I don't know what the boundaries of the world are. Like nothing mm -hmm. has stakes anymore because I don't know what somebody can and cannot control. Yeah, I mean, I think it got better. I I binge watched it when I wasn't well, so 
maybe it's not the best idea, but I, I, I think about halfway through you go, okay, this makes, I understand. Okay. Okay. Halfway through. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> so like, not that many episodes, like eight episodes. So you're all right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just like, I love the fantasy. So I think in my dream project, I, there would be some sort of magical element, some magical power, but nothing like Sandman level. Cause it's just too much to track. Maybe they travel back in time. Sure. Oh, that sounds fun. And they each kind of like a mixture. Some sort of magical ability that they get to use like once. It's like a one time power. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that would be, it would be like a crossover between like Knives Out, Down Abbey, and Sandman Light, just because it's on my brain. (laughs) <laughs> Some people yeah. put it could be like Doctor Who, but I don't know. If it's Doctor like Who, or I haven't seen Doctor Who. I know, I know. I haven't seen. I haven't seen much. I'm trying to like watch a show over the holidays. That makes sense. Yeah, it's difficult but to I pick get, just I one. I get like so. It's hard to pick just one. There's so many good things out. And there's so many good movies coming out right now. It's that time of year. Mm-hmm. Oh, Neil Gaiman also get me wrote, to... oh, he wrote four Doctor Who. Oh, interesting. I do like his books. So we shall see. I just don't know if they translate super well to the screen, but if he's writing for the show, um, cool. That's my answer. Okay. Um, so someone's put here, um, how many, oh, how many fans have noticed similarities between your last Christmas movie and way hot scenes? How did you feel when you realized that fans are so observant? <sighs> uh, that's a really, really funny question. How did I think I it's the thing with the top, isn't it? Like, I think I, yeah. I knew I like it wasn't like oh I'm shocked that they would notice that but I have to say like guys I come on to these this movie in particular most of these Christmas movies like three two weeks before we shoot they're already written like it's not written for I love that like it's like very lovely that people are like oh it's because they follow her career and they watched way hot but but it isn't it's I think it's actually because with Way Hot, we were playing on those tropes. Like that was kind yeah. of the joke we were playing in Winona Earp is we were taking yeah. all those, like someone comes into a bar and like takes that person's shirt off. Like it's that thing where you're watching a movie and you're like, that never happens. So that's exactly with Way Hot with so many of those moments what we were actually trying to do, which is why you're seeing them play out because they're kind of archetypes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I... I can totally see the similarities. I didn't even, I know this sounds crazy. Like when we were shooting, the only one was the sweater one. That one mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. this is, I mean, cause it's such, a, like I've seen that scene so many times on Winona. <laughs> I can only dread the thing to imagine. How much that? When we were doing it, I was like, oh, when I read it in the script, I was like, oh man, people are going to totally poke fun at this. <laughs> but um, the elf thing, I didn't even cross my mind, like at all. The elf hat. I was it, it, like when, I, when saying, I watched it, I didn't think about I didn't it either. Think too, at all. And then when people bringing it up, I was like, they would. They posted. I saw someone post a picture of Nicole and um, what was my character's name? Emma, side by side. And I was like, oh yes, the elf. Hat, of course, you know. And I had short hair. Thank yeah. uh, for both of them too. So that was like very fun. But no. But a lot of the scripts. They're written, they're developed for like uh, years before any of us come on board. They're written. I have actually in the past asked for things to be changed that were really similar. There's a couple things on Goodwitch that were like so similar. I was like, can we please, like people are going to think, even though the writer had never seen Winona Earp, I was like, this is like such an iconic moment on the show. Can we change this? And they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, yeah, because you don't want it to be too similar because it just seems... No, you don't, but you also, like, you're treading this line of, like, I'm not the writer, and, you know, this is what they've written, and they haven't seen Winona Earp, so... um, But I do think, uh, yeah, so, yeah. It's very fun, though. I mean, I'll never put anything past Earpers to notice at this point. Um, (laughs) You guys notice stuff that, like, I don't even think about, and then, like, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Wouldn't have thought of it. People are so good. Like I'm really like oblivious to most oh, things. I'm so, I'm and then so people oblivious. put it on Twitter and I'm like, obviously, like how did or like even when I'm watching shows and people are like, did you notice? Yeah. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. I know. Uh yeah, lots of people are saying about they've got their binoculars on and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole binoculars. <laughs> 
shelf and the shelf. Cool. People are cute. Yeah, it's very funny. It's so funny. I like always forget that there are people watching these things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Until there's yeah. like, that. And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, there's, this is more than just you and I. Well, I like to do it this way because then at least some people have like input as well. Like, I know a lot of people just yeah. do straight interviews, but I think I like it like this. It's kind of like a yeah. big meet and greet, kind of. It is. It is. It's like <laughs> a big meet and greet for sure. For sure. Um, so. Someone called Valentina has put, how much do you think being part of the LGBTQIA community has impacted on your career? Oh. Impacted on my career. I mean, not that much. I don't, I don't really know how to answer that because I never talked about my sexuality publicly before Winona Earp, but I also was never asked or like was, you know, like it never it came It doesn't up. matter, does it? No. It doesn't really matter. Whereas now I feel like we're in a very different time where like people are very much, which I still, I've said this on panels before, I still like don't know how I feel about that because I don't think in any other job is it okay for you like to go into a job interview and for someone to be like, who do you sleep with at night? Like what, like yeah. what's your bed situation? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just yeah. like that. That's sort of weird, like, or yeah. who have you dated in the past? Or like, what was college? Like, you know, I'm just like, that's weird. so weird. Why are we doing that? And like, why does it, why does it matter? But then I also see why it does matter. It's a, it's a really, really tricky one. Um, so I don't think my being part of the community like the only people who who I ever spoke about my sexuality to were like my husband my best friends people who I was with like so it, does, it just doesn't really matter it should, shouldn't anyway really, should it but like I think it's a great thing that I got to speak about a little bit more because of my job so that's kind of great um I don't know I, I feel like the the expected answer is like so much rah rah but but yeah. like I don't know. I've always looked at my characters. I loved that Nicole was like an out and proud lesbian. And I was like, this is so awesome that I get to play this character. And like, I've had like, you know, aspects of this personal experience, but I don't know. At the end of the day, it was always about her and who she was as a person. And that was always like, I will always stand by the fact that it was an aspect of her. It wasn't everything she was. Yeah. So like, I think that's the best way to play it though. I at the end of the day, everyone's a person. Touchstones. Like great that I had some touchstones, but I also like, I love that I wasn't asked in my audition. Yeah. You know, like what's your experience with, with, with being with people of different genders yeah. or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. I think that crosses a, a, a weird line in a job interview. Yeah. I don't think it should be asked. It's not necessary. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Yeah, but then, yeah, but then I do understand where it gets gray and where it's important, and we need to think about it more. Uh, it's a tricky, it's a very tricky one. But but I yeah, yeah. Um. So another question here: um, Have you ever imagined Nicole's adolescence and her relationship with her parents, and eventually her coming out? Like, what what do you think that was like for Nicole? I have imagined it. Um, I feel like for Nicole, I don't know if I never imagined a big coming out for Nicole because she had a really difficult relationship with her parents. And I think that she, by the grace of whatever happened in her life, was always pretty confident in her sexuality and probably was a, someone who knew from a young age. Um, so I haven't ever imagined like a big coming out um, specific moment in her life. I think she kind of always knew. Uh, yeah, I don't think there was like a big, a big moment for her. And I think it might have been more. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly haven't really thought about like a, a huge sit down with her parents. I kind of feel like they always knew. Mm -hmm. Or like, I don't think her parents were, were like homophobic or anything like that. I just think they just didn't click with her. They were like stuffy academics who like just, they didn't, 
they, they didn't connect with this daughter who was like outdoorsy and like like didn't really give a shit about academia and being she didn't want to be a professor like she wanted to go and do what they thought was like layman's work or like a, a job that you know it wasn't it wasn't a uh, a righteous career path or whatever because they're so of that like thing that academia is the only way so i think they like they always knew she was queer she kind of always knew she was queer it wasn't that they were against that they just were like we don't click with you you're kind of a weird yeah. kid and we don't really have like a lot to connect with you on which is why she had such a great relationship with her with her aunts and yeah her i mean i never had like a massive coming out i kind of just knew when i was 13 and i was like I might be bi or I might yeah. something, but I don't know. And then you just kind of figure it out and it that's is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I really do. I don't see like a big and I I I do like to think about like who was in Nicole's life that, you know, she was in a position where she felt comfortable with her sexuality, she knew who she was, and like so who nurtured that in her? Or do we always need somebody to do that? Like what if, you know, her environment was was supportive and progressive enough and understanding enough like just because her parents were in academia doesn't mean she wasn't surrounded by like people who maybe people who were queer yeah. or people who really were supportive of the queer community no, i mean like, i didn't know think... anyone who was gay until i was about 16 or 17. Not really even... wow like... see well then i don't know like there you go it wasn't like, even discussed it was just yeah yeah that, yeah. that's how I kind of get how like television can be quite a big thing like because uh, the only thing I saw the only thing I saw was on Buffy so right like 14 and that was it and that was like a massive taboo thing at the time like they're not allowed to kiss so don't I think so right, it's, it's right. funny how I see it now and then I go bloody hell this is like I know I, I know. this when I was 14 <laughs> yeah like, no I get it so, I think that's the thing that's so important to acknowledge about coming out stories and I just pray that with more queer characters on TV or or that that we just I mean young people now are so cool yeah. like they're like I'm like fucking eight this is awesome there's like these like kids who are like experimenting and open to anything and like trying it on trying to see you know see how it feels and like they're so they can be not all kids and listen and not in all places i live in a very yeah. liberal part of the world like i'm and i i grew up in the arts so like i get it i'm coming from a very specific um experience lived life experience of very accepting and open so please color my, what i'm saying with that knowledge but like I'm seeing all these young people now, these like young teens who are just like very much talking about sexuality in a non-judgmental way, which I think is so cool. And in a, in, a, in a way of curiosity and in a way of like support, I just, I'm like, wow. I think about my son and like, what's it gonna be like for him? I, I mean, I hope we just kind of keep going to the point oh, where so. like what you were saying earlier, Hannah, like that he doesn't even feel like, I mean, I'm really praying that with us as parents, he's not, he's going to be growing up in a very, um, you know, open and accepting and supportive household, but I'm sure I'm going to send him to therapy for something. I fully accept the fact <laughs> that we all fuck our kids up in some way. But, um, I'm certain it's not going to be that. So, um, yeah. So I'm just like, I'm really, that makes me really hopeful because I think like, teens today are incredible. I think they have an open-mindedness and a, a, an access to information that can be really dangerous, but can also be really empowering and really um, confidence boosting and helping people find their tribe and like all these things. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. No, but I mean, if I, but had, I think it's like, really fucking awesome. Yeah. That, like that's the direction at yeah. least in my day-to-day -day experience that I see a lot of young people heading. That makes me like so fucking happy and proud of these stories and what I think they might be contributing to in our society. Yeah, I mean, if I'd have had Winona and then Twitter and that it, like uh, everybody sort of like being okay with everything, it would, it, it you know, now like it's amazing. 
yeah it'd have been so much easier then it obviously was, yeah. it's different in sense of you've got social media and it can be a bad thing for people for sure but yeah overall i think actually it's doing a lot of favors for a lot of people and you can yeah. be anonymous if you want to you can just be a person called anything and you know mm -hmm. that's fine i think it's really good mm -hmm. makes makes life easier to learn a little bit about yourself i think yeah and to like i think the further away we get from labels also the the more authentically we allow people to exist like, mm -hmm. my god a label is still a box i know it makes people feel like maybe a sense of ownership or belonging or pride that can be super helpful i think dom said it we had a um a panel a couple weekends ago and dom said something really great along the lines of dom felt like the label was really helpful to get them to a certain spot of self understanding love and then the label started to feel limiting something mm -hmm. i'm like really paraphrasing but that was sort of the gist of what they were saying and i really loved that it's like that's mm -hmm. so astute that's so well a uh, well articulated um around that i really feel like there's something there's something in that and i i feel like we're heading in that direction it's a long road but feels good yeah i agree yeah. um so i've got um a question from twitter I said I'd add one in from social media. So uh, had lots of questions. So we've had to um, sift through them. Um, so MindReader30 wants to know, how do you feel about uh, and its fans continuing to weave itself through your career as it progresses? So basically, oh. ERP, ERPers are going to like follow you. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I love I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's um you know, like, how do I feel about it? How can you, how can you feel? I guess I just, I hope that I don't let people down. That is one thing I always worry about is like, I don't want to let you guys down. So I think that's like the only ever thing that I think could be that I would ever struggle with is like, I hope that they're proud of me. I hope that they like this. I hope that they, um, feel like I'm still serving them in some way. I don't know. Like that's the only, the only thing that, but like the flip side of having that is also like to get to have support and, and so many wonderful people who are cheering you on in a business that is like, can be ruthless, um, can be so, Boy, boying, boy, boy, boying, boy. You know what I'm trying to say? That word <laughs> to boy you. I can't say it right now. Um, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To like lift you up in those yeah. times of of self doubt or when things aren't going your way or when things aren't clicking. Like we all go through that, but like this business is notorious for it. And I think to know that there are people out there that will still support you. And know that you're trying I mean, your you best. Know, comments down the side are like, "We've got you." Like, we're proud yeah. of you. So, <laughs> I think That's it's you know, sweet. people don't expect you to have to do like the same thing all the time. Like, we know you work and to make money. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. that that is how it is. And yeah, know, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Way. It's that balance of like, you know, you, you you there's always there's three things with jobs. And you can only ever get two. I had a teacher told me this once. And I think it's true for like every thing in life. You either like love the project, love the people, or like are getting paid really well. And you can usually only get two of those. Mm -hmm. So like you have to. Some projects you're going to love the project and love the people, but there's no money. And like sometimes you're like, I'm going to make money on this. And this is like my job. And I like love the people, but the project meant or vice versa. You know, any combination of those things. And I think as an artist, I always try to remind myself of that because yeah. And like, you find stuff you love in everything. Like I love, I genuinely love everything I do because I love being on set and I love being an actor. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I'm so, I'm so freaking grateful that I get to do a job that I love. I don't love the things outside of the job like the auditioning and the rejection and the stigma against women and navigating all of that. Um, 
especially being like a new mom, I feel like I've reached another level of like, I don't know, people look at like, like being a sex symbol and like all these things. I'm just like, hmm, it's that stuff I fucking loathe. But I love when I get to actually go to work and do my thing. It's awesome. You feel at home when you can get yeah. your script and go and do. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like, you get to do that. I don't know what, like uh, you shoot a movie for 15 days. Let's say I got, I was so fortunate. I shot three movies this year. That means like I was on well, set in. for 45 days. That's mm -hmm. like a busy year. That's not the work. That's the joy. The work is like being in this room. I'm in like my studio. I'm fucking slogging out audition after audition after audition and throwing them into a black hole and you hear nothing back. Mm. That's, the, that's the like work. This yeah. and like being on set, engaging with you guys, that's the joy. But you don't get one without the other. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I've got one more question for you then. Um, so from Jojo, um, a fun, fun one. If you could have two past or present characters that you've portrayed be in a movie or series together, which two would it be and what would the plot be? Oh, that's fun. Because you could do so many different ways. This could be like a horror and you're killing each yeah. other. Oh, like <laughs> the first one that came to mind is is Jack Jacqueline. I think her name was Jacqueline Gill. Jacqueline Gill. She was like this horrible, horrible person that I played in this movie called The Scare House, and she um, she was like a really evil, awful person. I would really like to see her and Alicia Rutherford from Working Moms. <laughs> Yes, oh that's gosh. on the amazing race together. Um, oh my god, carnage! Yes, <laughs> carnage, carnage. Because I feel like Alicia's got a dark side that Jacqueline would just pull right out of her. Like Alicia's a she's a feisty bitch when she wants mm -hmm. to, go, when she lets herself be. And I think that the two of them, and like. They're on, I don't know, they're on The Amazing Race or some such, Bernie, my dog is scratching at the door because he hears, he hears Ray upstairs. Um, <laughs> um, give me a bed. I know, I've had him down here for too long. It's too long. Um, I've, um, I've quarantined most of mine downstairs. Look, this Bernie got, we got new shoes. Oh. Look at those trim paws. You got new shoes. Is that because okay. does snow does snow catch on them? Is that because no, no, have no, a dog he, a snow we went for his it. groom and they always like trim his paws. It's really nice. It's really so we always joke and say, Bernie got new shoes. Bernie got new shoes. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> so yes, yeah, some sort of amazing race that turns into like maybe they murder someone and then they have to cut it, and they're like, it's like a Bonnie and Clyde on the run around the world that's actually like a really fun movie. <laughs> yeah i like that <laughs> so let's say that she has got a lot more layers than what we saw i reckon she could be oh evil. she's she, not she's, so me she alicia, says what she thinks <laughs> she's like the ultimate onion alicia has so many layers whereas i feel like nicole has like nicole's more like me she's got like three layers you know it's like more of like what you see is what you get alicia is who some, oh, yeah. And Jacqueline, I think, is like she is who she is and she's not sorry about it. And Alicia is who she is and is sorry about it. And Jacqueline would just 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 take that right off for her and it would be really fun. Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. And it could be it could even be a mystery murder at the end, like you said. I think that'd be fun. Oh, that would be yeah. who done oh, it? I'm really into like the murder mysteries right now. Clearly, I really am looking forward to um, the Glass Onion. I loved Knives Out, like that. I love movies like that, like ensemble. Are you, have you seen it, Hannah? I haven't. No. Oh, it's great. I don't know if like ensemble murder mystery things are your thing, but um, I like crime stuff. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Okay, you mm -hmm. might like it. It's really fun. It's very clever. Oh yeah. 
you, I know. Is he wanting to add his comments? <laughs> he is. Like, I'm giving him a very good belly rub and he's he's groaning because I don't know. Mine, mine are quarantined downstairs. I said, don't let them up here because they will, up. They, they will play carnage in this room. So I was like, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Burns. Good boy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling very, I'm very silly mood. Very silly it's mood. It's all good. I think I baby talk to my dog. It's like, it is what it is. It they is, they yeah. love it. How can they... you not? How can you not? Look at this guy. He's like, look at him. He's just, he's loving it. Oh, belly rubs. <laughs> oh, belly rubs. Like, sorry. <laughs> this feels very it's like so friends good. hang out in informal, so I'm being a... Uh... <sighs> it's so good. Oh, thank you yeah. very much for giving us your time anyway, Karen. Oh, this is so fun. On. And congrats on the new show, Hannah. I know it's going to be amazing. Everything you do is. And uh, I was very happy to join you. So thank you for no inviting problem. me. And thank you, you guys, for showing up. This they're is all really being awesome. very supportive down the corner. So that's yes, amazing. they're so, they're so <laughs> supportive, guys. I, I really appreciate it. And have a great holiday. I'll probably you too. Do I hope you have a really like nice Christmas. Instagram live to connect with everybody at some point during the holidays. See how you're all doing. So, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Oh, thank you for being one of my biggest supporters, Kat. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's my oh, pleasure. It's I love what you do. I love you, and uh, and keep keep doing it. I think uh, I'm really excited for this next chapter for you. Because and you too. I'm sure we'll we'll uh, cross paths. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'll hold you to it. Okay. All right then. Thank okay. you. Okay. You take care. Have a great holiday. You too. Bye. 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 If you enjoyed today's video, like, comment and subscribe and join us on our socials for any further news. See you next time. Bye.